church. I am Pastor Joseph. Yeah, Martini's a funny name, isn't it? And I bet a lot of people don't know where it comes from. We're not uh, called Martini on account of the cocktail, but because it's a Lutheran church of, of Martin Luther. So with the Latin there, it, it ends up looking like, like the famous cocktail. But yep, we're Martini Lutheran Church. It's so nice to see all of you guys here. And I think many of us already know that we're here for a very special reason today. We're here to witness the holy baptism of Jeremiah Cool, where he will be made a child of God. And that's not my work, that's God's work that he does. It may just appear to be plain water, but with God's word, that's a sacrament. 
It's the forgiveness of all of his sins in the beginning of his Christian life. So we remember that we as the church, even if we're not part of his biological family, have the uh, opportunity, the privilege, and the responsibility to pray for him and to support him and his parents as he grows into uh, a Christian man one day. We have got a lot of announcements here, if you've noticed. Got something about the baptism there. Um, let me see here. We have some LWML things coming up. Apparently there is a Baltimore Zone Spring Rally, if any of you guys are part of that, on April 27th. So just double check that information there. Um, I can't remember if this was in the bulletin last week, but we do have something that our district is doing to support those who have been affected by the bridge collapse. Um, you can go ahead and check out some of the specifics there, but that would be a way if you want to give a gift card, if you want to give money or share something tangible, that would be a way to coordinate that. Another point about that as well, there will be a prayer service uh, this coming Tuesday at Nazareth, so on Bank Street there with Pastor Miguel Tornier. Um, that's going to be at 1 p.m. I'm going to try to be there. I know there's also a council meeting that evening, so I will be in the city there for most of the afternoon. But uh, if anybody would like to come with me, because parking will probably be tight, um, we'll try to carpool from here, I don't know, 1230 or so. I think half an hour to get over there would probably be a fair amount of time. Um, and I'll let you know how that goes. I'm not sure how many folks will come in from the city for that. We've got a reminder here about bringing in fresh flowers for worship. If you've got gardens, now would be the time to bring those in. Um, <laughs> we had a very nice time at the get-together on Friday night. Um, we had a pretty good group. How many people would you say we had there? 20. 20? Okay, pretty good group. We met uh, over there in Pasadena at the uh, uh, Passion Asian Bistro, and that was fun. Some fabulous prizes were indeed had, and I now know why we couldn't give them away. There is, uh, just to wrap up here, there's a Concordia Handballs event. That's not going to be till May. More pressingly, and, and this is my fault, um, have you guys heard of the St. Mark's Conference that happens at, uh, at Our Savior with Pastor McLean? They're a little bit away from us. Every year there's something called the St. Mark's Conference. They've been doing it maybe not quite 10 years. It's open to laymen and pastors alike. They talk about um, a number of theological themes, but then there's also opportunity for corporate worship, for fellowship, um, and get-togethers afterwards. That's happening not this Tuesday, but in a week. So the, the Monday and Tuesday, the 22nd and the 23rd. I will be going. Um, you'll have to register if you want to do that, but you're welcome to come along with me. The topics that will be discussed are Martin Luther's understanding of vocation, according to his lectures on Genesis, and then number two, what it means to be a sacramental liturgical church in the city. So Second one is the one that maybe interests me a little bit more, but it should be a good time, and you're welcome to come and say, Pastor, this is boring, and sit with me and complain, or you can ask me questions, but that's where I intend to be. Am I missing anything? George, yep. Just a reminder church council meeting Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. If you know who you are, then you know that you need to be there. So, um, Also a reminder, there will be fellowship after the service. There will be food and hospitality uh, down the hall there in, in the bigger room in the fellowship area. Without further ado, let's begin with our processional hymn number 700. <laughs>
be seated. If we could have the baptismal party come forward. So mom and dad, grab a hymnal too, because that's what we'll be using. Get cozy, there should be a room. All right. And we're on page 268 in the hymnal following the uh, rite for the sacrament of holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So, of course, you guys will be speaking because he cannot speak yet. How are you named? Jeremiah. Jeremiah, receive the sign of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through water on dry ground foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Jeremiah according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, in which he himself has committed sins, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Jeremiah as a sponsor in the Christian faith? You say, yes. Yes, with the help of God. God, enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Now here's where we get to more. Jeremiah, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Jeremiah, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. All right. Do you want to hold him? I can hold him. Whatever you're comfortable with. Perfect. Jeremiah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light. Excuse me. Or you guys can hold this too, actually. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with all of us, all the treasures of heaven, and the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. And this is a perfectly appropriate time to clap and give thanks for the work that God has achieved. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Jeremiah the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. You may be seated. You can blow that out, too. We've got some things for you, too, here. So this is for you guys. If you want to take the candle back now, this is the box. Here. I'll get this for you.
please stand as we continue with the service of the word on page 186 with the Kyrie, Gloria, and Excelsis, and so on. be to God on high. be with you. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 3. While the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. The times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. You may be seated for the sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours this day from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for the sermon today is the epistle reading, as you heard read previously, with a few extra verses. So, verses 1 through 10. You may be seated. As I said, you obviously heard the epistle read previously, but I thought that there were a few more verses that were appropriate, especially on this day when we are seeing and receiving our new brother in Christ in holy baptism. So I read verses 8 through 10. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. What does it mean to be a Christian? People have been asking each other this and themselves this for centuries, literally since the beginning of the church. People were asking Jesus what it meant if they were going to follow him. They were trying to figure out what to do to prove that they were worthy. And it was always those who tried to do more or tried to prove more who were disheartened to hear that it didn't work like that, that there aren't special prizes among Christians. It's still like that, and there's still a lot of disappointed people. They avoid the church because the church doesn't do things on their terms, according to the world's dealing and thinking. Anyone who has served in congregational leadership will echo this with me. Things do not always go the way that we think or want them to go. You don't get to call the shots just because you're in charge. Being a part of the church, and that's church with a capital C, is about giving and doing, yes, but not in order to be seen, and it's not really our giving and our doing. And being a part of the church is about somebody getting their way, yes, but it's not us getting our way. If you want to know the answer and you're still in suspense, go ahead and read the epistle again. Or, if you want to dig a little deeper, remember what we all witnessed this morning with that little boy. And remember what we all promised to do as members of the body of Christ for that little boy. What does it mean to be a Christian? In our text and in the living example of the Father's love, we have our answer. Now, St. John in the epistle is speaking as a spiritual father to young ones in the faith, not literally to little children. He's talking to his beloved brothers and sisters in Christ as a pastor. He, He would have been a venerable man. He would have been quite advanced in years at the time of this writing. The last living apostle of Christ, perhaps frustrated that he was not afforded the conclusive death of a quick martyrdom like so many of his brothers. He was living in exile on the island of Patmos, cut off from the familiar, but he still had the connection of the congregation. He still had a family within the body of Christ. His voice is encouraging. It's gentle, and yet it's also firm, as he was talking to his flock way back then and to us still today, a spiritual father instructing us as well about growing up in the faith of Christ and what it means to be a beloved child of God. With all the restraint of one more experienced in matters of faith and matters of life, which might often be the same thing, St. John is urging restraint and patience. There are many unknowns for all who live in the world, and yet to live in the body of Christ now means that what is believed is what is known. And what is known, life and salvation and forgiveness in Jesus, far outweighs any unknowns and any fears that we might face in the world today. It's sort of easy, and we talked about this a little bit in Bible study, to imagine St. John sort of talking to us maybe as our earthly parents used to do, or maybe as they still do. You know, when they're telling us to quit being knuckleheads and straighten up. Because at first it sounds like he's saying, you know right from wrong, so do the good and don't do the bad. This is why context is always important and why I wanted to bring in those other verses. We know from our Christian lives that we can never do enough good works, and avoid enough bad things at the same time to earn our way into heaven. This kind of points and and tallying is a zero-sum game. 
But St. John reminds us what the game really is here and who the players are. So there is you and me, but we're a little bit more in the middle rather than serious competitors here. God is one of them, specifically in the text. You hear about the Father and you hear about Christ. And on the other side, there's Satan. And that's how it's always been. So you see then that because we're in the middle, you and I are the prizes and the concern in the middle of this game. There is a competition going on for your soul. This is the God who is jealous for your attention, who has made you in all things, who has cared for you from the time you were conceived in your mother's womb. This is the God who has, as, as we read in verse 9 there, planted his seed within you. Now more than this, the Greek text says, this is the one who has caused his seed to abide in you, to remain within you. So then go back to verse 6. The one who abides in the Father is not able to sin. We abide with the Father because he has caused this seed to abide in us. So what's the special seed then? And if the one who abides in the Father does not keep on sinning, then you say, how many congregations are there with how many Christians in them? Why hasn't the church made the world a better place? The seed is the seed of faith. This is Christ within you. Jeremiah received Jesus' name on him, received the Holy Spirit today. He now carries that seed. That seed has everything it needs to spring up, as in the parable of the reckless sower. But where does that seed fall? As we remember in the parable, some people receive the seed and it seems to have failed before it could even start. Well, perhaps we'll be surprised to see them on the last day, though. We don't know what's in everybody's heart. Others receive the seed, and, and though they don't draw any attention to their works or their service or their prayers, they're constantly about the Father's business. Still others may receive the seed, and their lives may experience dramatic ups and downs, drawing nearer to the church and still farther away again through various seasons of life. But in all of these, all who have been baptized, all who have heard the saving message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the seed has been planted. The Lord does not discriminate. He loves all of his little ones and he gives them all the same gift, regardless of how the world might view them or discriminate against them. And yet, though the seed is the same, every person is different. Differently made, differently gifted, faced with different crosses, different struggles in the Christian life. And every seed may not always be abundantly evident or come into its full flourishing at the same time or in the same way. And yet, just as Christ was planted in the ground, in the dark soil of the tomb in the cave, he did not stay there. The one who has given us full certainty and joy, who has given full certainty and joy to the seed which the Father has seen fit to place within us, sprang up, overflowing with life. The fruits of his life-giving death and resurrection are now evident in those who call themselves Christians. Not perfect people, but followers of Christ. Because if we were perfect people, we wouldn't have any crosses to carry. We wouldn't need to come here to the divine service. We would not hunger or thirst to find comfort in our baptism or to seek the presence of Christ and the fellowship of his kingdom and the sacrament of the altar. You see, if, if we didn't need these things or if we stopped needing these things, there could possibly be two reasons. One, because we would already be in Christ's presence, enjoying all that and awaiting the fulfillment of all things, or because we might be straying in a need of restoration and have forgotten our need of these things. On this very special day in which the whole church in heaven and on earth rejoices for the baptism of Jeremiah, we give thanks because this is God's work, and it is marvelous in our eyes. What God has done, what God has created within this young boy, lacks nothing. God has placed his name upon him. God has placed the seed of faith within him. Now the seed must be nurtured. God abides with Jeremiah, but God has not forced Jeremiah to do this thing. Yes, he's a little child, and his parents have rightly brought him here out of fear and reverence for the Lord to receive this gift that they could not give him. But he, like any one of us, could one day reject this reality. 
Perhaps many of us have also wandered at times. And yet what God has done for Jeremiah on this day will never disappear. It cannot be taken from him. Now, the old adage is not true. Holy baptism is not a once saved, always saved sort of thing. You can leave your baptismal identity behind, but it will always be there waiting for you. God doesn't make us to be robots living in the world before baptism. And we know that we're still going to struggle with sinful inclinations throughout our whole lives. To take what is not ours, to do the easy thing rather than the right thing, to avoid the just fight for the sake of easy peace. This is why Jeremiah needs your prayers. This is why his parents need your prayers. And more than your prayers, you may have real opportunity to love and serve that young boy and to serve his parents as well as he grows and learns about his Lord. Prayers are good, for you ask God's blessing as you do them as members of the body of Christ. That seed within you that is still growing into full maturity is also being nurtured by God's word, tended by his Holy Spirit. I'm sure that many of you could tell me how it's perhaps already even brought about a harvest in some way, and yet the full harvest hasn't arrived. The Spirit will also tend your seed, pruning and feeding it as it is needed, so that it will grow. There are seemingly different seasons in the Christian life. There are seasons of plenty, seasons of joy, vitality, excitement, and enthusiasm. And just as quickly they can seem to fade, to be replaced with an experience of dryness, exhaustion, disinterest, boredom, frustration. It's not sinful to go through those things in and of themselves. That's part of life in the world. Sometimes it's going to be easier than others. But you're still the Lord's. He tells you where to go so that you will be fed. He shows you those people who will encourage you on the walk, who will convict you when you must be brought back, and patiently, lovingly remind you of who he's made you to be and what it means that you carry that seed of faith within you. When we train up young people in these things, in patterns and routines as simple as things you might do at home, like what you do to get ready for bed, or what you do when you come home from school, or how you have to make things right when you hurt somebody, we're giving them tools to lead their lives as adults. We're creating habits. And those are going to be either good habits or bad habits. The good ones lead to virtue, to strengths and righteous convictions. And the bad ones can lead to weakness and uncertainty. These are merely temporary circumstances. They're part of life in this world, but they are important from a young age for little children. Little children watch and learn what their parents prioritize, how their parents spend their time and money, who and what they allow to remain in their lives. And they may carry those patterns and observations with them for the rest of their lives. Little children are sponges literally at first eating everything that their mother gives them, and then later on, holding on to everything that they see and hear. And that is also what you are called to be. St. John addresses his hearers, and that means he's talking to us too as little children. He is a spiritual father, but because of that seed of faith that he also carried, and the work entrusted to him by his Lord, he was also a child at the feet of Christ. For it is for such as these that the kingdom of heaven has been prepared and is revealed. Not just literal little children, but those of us who strive to listen to our Father, to hear his voice, who receive the good things he has prepared for us and given to us. Children depend on the adults in their lives to show them the good and help them to avoid the bad. And so it is with the rest of us too. We are all children before our Heavenly Father, because of our miraculous second birth in the waters of holy baptism. Here, your sins are forgiven. Here, a place is prepared for you in heaven. Here, you meet your new family in Christ. It's a homecoming to a home you never knew you had. And a warm welcome to a community that maybe hasn't met you yet, but knows everything about you that they need to know. That you're baptized. Be as the little children are. Soak up all that good stuff that your Father desires to give you. Hold on to that watery embrace of holy baptism. Be quenched within the profound depths 
of the Holy Word of God. You guys are getting better in Bible study, but don't be afraid to ask why and how come about the things of the Christian life without shame, as little children do. As little children, we're all always learning and growing. The one who tells you that there's nothing more to learn, that all the services and opportunities of the body of Christ to gather in his word are boring, unnecessary, irrelevant, is despising the seed that is planted within him or her. Works don't save us. But the works brought about by the conviction of the word and the working of the Holy Spirit, or when those works are avoided, give voice to the seed that is within us. Man cannot serve two masters. There is a prince of this world, Satan, to whom we are all born naturally in servitude and hopelessness. And then there's the prince of heaven, Christ himself, to whom we are entrusted in our second birth. Little children, we cannot choose our Lord, but he has chosen us. He has freed us. He has purchased us from slavery. He has given us a new future. He has shown us a new way. To which prince, to which allegiance do your works speak? Have you forgotten to long for the pure spiritual milk and traded away a father's welcome for the easy and neglectful ways of the fallen world. There is no wandering that cannot be forgiven. There is no distance that cannot be erased. Your father loves you, little children, and he wants always that you should know him better and love him more deeply. For in so doing, you will only love your neighbors better with the same kind of love with which your father first loved you. See what kind of love the father has for you. He has called you daughter, son, Inheritor, friend, forgiven. He has called you to know him in this place. Taste and see that he is good. This is not the kind of father who will mistreat you or abuse you or speak badly about you or disappoint you. He loved you so very much that he sent his only begotten son, the firstborn, as it were, to be killed in your place instead so that the gates of heaven would be not closed, but open to you, and that all obstacles would be removed from your believing and hoping in this reality. It all might seem foggy now at times, but in the day of the Lord's return, you shall see your Father in heaven as he is. You shall see Christ your brother in his glory, all because of your adoption and baptism, all because of Christ's sacrifice for you, all because of your Father's love. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ unto life everlasting. Amen.
Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, in your presence we find fullness of joy, and by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In Jesus' name, among us and all the nations of the world, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. We ask especially that you would look with favor upon your beloved child, Jeremiah, baptized this day into Christ's death and resurrection. Grant that his parents might raise him in the Christian faith, that he may not depart from the true way as he grows. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders especially Joseph, our president, and Wes, our governor. Preserve order and decency in this fallen world by their hands and restrain the sins and deceptions of the lawless, that we may practice righteousness while awaiting the eternal peace promised in Christ's wounds alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all comfort, you have compassion on those who are afflicted. Remember and have mercy on Pat, Glenda, Denise, John, Gloria, Joyce, Karen, Joan, Albert, Henry, Norm, Sandra, John, Cristanini, and all of the police, fire department members, military and their families, as well as all those in our community who have been affected by the collapse of the Key Bridge. We also lift up the supported missionaries of our congregation, John Wolf and his family in Kenya, and Mindy Taves in Taiwan, as well as all of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted around the world. We also give thanks this week for all those remembering their baptisms, Jenna, Sophia, and Tristan. We also pray for all those in need of your healing and deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen, amen. We conclude with our recessional hymn number 465.